and Lieutenant General Sir Andrew Gregory met the Queen many times in his role as Chief Executive of the charity and he joins us now. Uh, Sir Andrew, tell us uh, your, your most memorable or your proudest um, moment with the Queen. Uh, I would be honoured to do that. Just before I do it, I'd just love to say um, the support of the royal family to the armed forces over the decades has been absolutely extraordinary. And Her Majesty epitomised that. Uh, as you rightly say, she was the patron of the Soldiers, Sailors, Airmen and Families Association, known as SAFA, the Armed Forces Charity since 1952, but she's actually started being involved in the charity as a child. Her mother was a SAFA fundraiser. Uh, she delivered, alongside Princess Margaret, honey to uh, SAFA beneficiaries during the Second World War, uh, and later on she did an enormous amount of work with the, for the charity. I've had the privilege of having audiences with her, both in my SAFA role and as the head of the Royal Regiment of Artillery, the Master Gunner St James's Park. Uh, what would be my reflection? An extraordinarily knowledgeable, astute uh, and interested individual who particularly wanted to know the challenges facing those we support and what we were doing about them. Uh, and there are other instances I can talk about when I've had the privilege of meeting Her Majesty and indeed King Charles. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, uh, we assume now that he will become your new patron. We obviously would be hugely honoured if King Charles chose to do that. Uh, but as you were discussing previously, uh, the king will have many demands on his time and energies, and he must decide uh, where he wants to put them. Uh, given the breadth of the work that SAFA does, uh, ranging from supporting ageing veterans to looking after young service, serving families with additional needs and disabled children, running an adoption service and much, much more. We really hope he will become our patron, but it is for the King to make that choice. What have you learned about the King? You said that you have met uh, the King, probably Prince Charles, in the capacity that you met him in. Tell us about the nature of, of your involvement with, with Prince Charles. So it's, it's extremely interesting. Prince Charles was in many ways a man ahead of his time uh, with many of the causes he championed, youth, climate. And one of the things he chose to do was to invite uh, middle-ranking service officers from each of the services to dinner at Highgrove so he could keep in touch uh, with some of the thinking. And I had the honour of going to dinner at Highgrove uh, one evening uh, some years ago. And King Charles then, uh, very, like his mother, very interested, astute, uh, and keen to understand what was going on. Uh, and my personal view is he will be uh, a monarch. We will all um, have great privilege and honour to serve. And, and let's reflect, he was uh, a Royal Naval Commander. Of course, he had his own command, uh, trained as a, an RAF fast jet pilot as well. He, he did all of it. He did indeed. And I think that is one of the great strengths of our royal family, that uh, all members of the royal family, uh, Her Majesty's children, her grandchildren, have served in the armed forces. So they understand uh, the sense of service, the commitment to the individuals and indeed their families uh, and what they bring to this nation. And I think that is why uh, they are so keen to support military charities like SAFA, the armed forces charity. Lieutenant General Sir Andrew Gregory, uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for bringing yes, us uh, your views and indeed uh, what SAF has been doing for so many years. Thanks very much indeed.